Hey Guitar Geeks, Guitar Guts back. This is a follow-up video to one I made previously about how to change out the bar magnet in the back of your humbucking pickup. Today we're going to talk about what type of tone change you might expect to hear if you changed out the stock magnet with one of a different type. And of course you know we're not talking about this kind of magnet, we're actually talking about this kind of magnet, a bar magnet. Most of these magnets, except for some ceramics, are made out of an Alnico um, alloy. It's short for aluminum, nickel, and cobalt mix. And they range in uh, types and strengths, anything from A2 all the way up to A8. As far as I'm aware, there may be an A9, an A10, an A11, but I've never seen it. The first one here is an A2 magnet. It's one of the most common ones that manufacturers use. Uh, it has a very vintage, warm tone to it, a very chewy, organic sort of feel when you play it. It has a lot of mid-content and a very rounded off treble and sort of a looser low end to it. Uh, and of course, you can use any of these types of magnets to achieve tones that are not characteristic. But what I'm giving you is sort of the standard stereotypic sound that you would get out of a pickup that used that type of magnet. So that's the A2. Moving on up, we've got A3 magnet. Maybe not one of the more common ones, uh, but I do like it. I've used it more in single coil pickups than in humbuckers. In humbuckers, it's mainly used as an, a neck pickup magnet uh, from what I've seen. I haven't seen a whole lot of people use it as a bridge magnet. It has a little more treble than A2 and a little less bass, and it has a very bright, clear sound compared to the A2 magnet. And that can clear up um, muddy neck pickup positions fairly well. So that's A3. Next up we have A4. And A4 is, uh, from what I've seen, mainly used um, for bridge pickups, although I have seen it used in neck pickups as well. It has a fairly flat EQ. In other words, the treble, mid, and bass frequencies are all fairly even. And that tends to let your guitar's natural tone come through in the sound. Now, some people hear this as a flat EQ, and that's what they want. They don't want to emphasize any range. And other people hear it as sort of uh, bland because it doesn't color your sound very much. It's got a fairly moderate output. Next up is probably uh, the most common magnet used in humbucking pickups. This is A5. Um, it's got a fairly high output. Uh, it's got a lot of treble content, a lot of bass content, and the mids are fairly scooped. It's got a, a bright, clean tone to it and a fairly big bass that remains tight. It's not as loose as the A2 magnet pickup. And you can really use A5 to get uh, a wide, wide range of tones. You, you can use it for something uh, extremely vintage or something extremely aggressive and modern. So it's a very versatile magnet. The next one up in the list is A8. And um, it's sort of a mix, I would say, of like a, a little bit of a ceramic sound and a little bit of A2 character and a little bit of A5 mixed into. It's warm, but it has a lot of treble bite. It's got very tight lows. Uh, it has aggressive mids and treble. Um, it's a fairly high output magnet. It's got a smoother top end, uh, I think, than A5 though. Uh, and it's used fairly often for um, pickups to play metal. Uh, that's where I've mainly seen it used. Um, <clears throat> Next up we have one that's not an Alnico mix. This is a ceramic magnet. And ceramic has, um, again, a tight low end and very bright, very brash uh, high end to it, uh, treble tones. It's got fairly spongy type mids and very enhanced presence. Uh, it is big and bold and brash. Um, it's got a tight base, bright highs, uh, some people hear it as uh, a little bit cold, a little bit sterile, but that just depends on what you're looking for. Uh, I definitely wouldn't call some of the uh, pickups I've heard maybe with ceramics cold or sterile. Uh, but if you're looking for a big tone that is sort of over the top, ceramic might be the way to go. 
next up, we have one that uh, I don't see um, out of factory pickups very often at all. This is A5 magnet, but it's unoriented A5. In other words, all the magnetic domains in the metal are not lined up. And so it has a little bit of um, sort of a degaussed, in other words, lost a little bit of its magnetic pull sort of sound to it. Uh, A5 is a little bit brighter and has a little bit of a tighter end than this does. This is sort of a blend of A5 type magnet with a little bit of A2 character thrown in on top of it. It's a little warmer and more rounded than A5 and it has a little bit more treble than A2. So if you like A5 and you like A2 but uh, both of them have a little bit of an extreme that annoys you, this might be the perfect in-between, sort of the Goldilocks zone between those two magnets. I find that it works well to give a little bit more of a tight end to a humbucker that you don't like because you're using A2 and the end is the bottom end is too loose, or if you've got an A5 magnet that you find a little bit uh, ear, ear piercing and bright, it will round that off. Unoriented A5, that's also one of my favorites to experiment around with. And finally here, we have one that we've seen before. This is uh, another A5 magnet, but this one is a rough cast A5. And there's a difference between that and the smooth A5 that we looked at before. Um, if you look at the one that we've already seen, how shiny and smooth it is, and then if you look at the rough cast, it's almost like it was uh, sand cast. And it's got a lot of pits, a lot of little bumps in it. And that actually matters. It doesn't make a huge difference in tone, but it can make a significant difference if you're just looking to shave off a little bit of annoying high end from a pickup. It kind of smooths out the high end, but it has all the same characteristics of the A5, if that's what you're after. If you want to get rid of just a little bit of ear piercing high end, uh, the rough cast A5, like the one I took out of a Gibson uh, pickup, may be the way to go. Now, there are a lot of examples, I, I mean hundreds of examples, of how you can use a pickup, um, a pickup magnet swap to change the character of the pickup. Uh, I'll just give you a few examples. There are dozens more, and probably dozens more, that no one's ever tried, and you could pioneer that and see what it sounds like. Uh, this one's a Gibson 490R out of the neck of a um, uh, USA SG. A lot of people, and I don't find this to be true, I think it just requires a lot of patience and some adjustment, but a lot of people right off the bat will judge that pickup to be muddy in the neck pickup, especially compared to a, like a 498T in the bridge. Uh, and so one easy fix, if uh, adjusting the pole pieces and the pickup height doesn't work for you, one easy fix would be to replace the um, A2 pick, um, magnet that's in this pickup with an A5. That will take away a little bit of the muddiness, get rid of the spongy low end, and it will give it a tighter, brighter response that a lot of people think balances better with the 498 in the bridge. I've also seen some people replace the magnet in these with A3, and I tend to like that a little bit better than replacing it with A5, because I think the bottom end of it is still a little over the top if you replace it with A5. So maybe A3 would be the way to go with that one. Um, this is a Seymour Duncan JB and sometimes uh, people complain about the high end or maybe the high mids being uh, a little ear piercing, a little too bright in some guitars. So a lot of people will take this part and replace the A5 magnet that's in it with an A2. Uh, it, it doesn't turn into quite a vintage A2 sounding pickup, but it does tend to add a, a few mids. It kind of gets rid of the mid hump that the JB tends to have, and it reduces the treble frequencies a little bit and try and maybe mitigate some of that ear piercing uh, treble. The uh, Seymour Duncan 59 neck is sometimes criticized for being a little too boomy in some guitars. Uh, I don't find it that way in the SG that I play it in, but uh, in some guitars like Les Pauls, some people complain that the 59 neck is a little too boomy in the bass end. And so you can also do um, a mod on that with A3 magnet and take away a little bit 
of the uh, base end, get rid of the boominess, while still, still retaining a very vintage sounding neck humbucker. One of my favorites to mess around with, and you can tell because there's no pickups in these boxes because I'm using them all, <laughs> but one of my favorites to mess around with magnet types in is the Duncan Custom Line. Now there's uh, three or four different versions of this that you can go buy. You can buy the regular custom, which I don't have a box for here. You can get a custom custom, you can get a custom five, you can get a custom eight. Uh, but the neat thing about this is they're all the same pickup. The wind and the wire and everything is the same on them. The only thing that's different is the magnet. So you can turn a custom into a custom custom or a custom five into a custom or a custom custom into a custom eight if you want to just by replacing the magnets in the pickups so instead of going out and paying hundreds of dollars uh, for four different pickups that you might want to try out you can buy one and then buy some fairly cheap magnets and turn that one pickup into four different pickups so the possibilities are endless you just have to get in there and try them out and see what you like uh, hopefully you'll find something that uh, float your boat and matches your guitar perfectly and uh, even if you don't uh, it's still fun to experiment and learn new things about guitars hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a like at the bottom share any comments that you have in the comment section and let me know what kind of magnet experiments you perform thanks for watching we'll talk to you later